Good morning. So today I'm fishing the River Severn um, above Bewley, one of my favourite uh, stretches. Favourite stretches. This is only the second time I've fished it in the last 20 years. Um, I had a bit of a break while I was uh, living in Scandinavia, but this is undoubtedly one of my favourite stretches that I used to fish all those years ago. So you might have seen a, a post I did a couple of weeks ago where I came uh, stick float fishing or float fishing for barbel. Did quite well, had uh, 15 barbel, average weight 5 pounds I suppose, biggest was almost 10. All on the float, all on the centre pin, so I thought I'd come down again today. That's the first time I fished on the centre pin for the barbel and uh, I learned a few things that day. So um, I just thought I'd show you my, my setup in a little bit more detail because I know a few people are interested. Um, and I want to explain why I think it's a, it's a good way to fish and it's a responsible way to fish. So this is um, my fishing station. Um, it's something that uh, I put together from uh, the guys at Matchbox. Um, it's a side tray with four legs, adjustable legs, and then there's a couple of uh, bars come out. And these pivot so I can change the angle and I normally fish it with a tray on the left hand side I mean I could fish it the other way around if I wanted to and whether the water is running from right to left or left to right it, uh, it doesn't really matter, it works for me, I'm right handed so the first thing you'll see that I'm ro I've got it really low in the water um, that's because I'm as far out in the river as I can fish um, I like standing in the river, I'm not interested in sitting on the seat box um, I like to have a, a good perspective of the float as it's going downstream and I think you get a better perspective if you're uh, the closer you are to the water level. So you can see I've got um, I've got a quite a big net there. That's actually a pike net from a company called Big Fish. Um, rubberized net, uh, very very strong, quite heavy in fact. Um, but I I have it permanently in that position, and you can see that it's just under the water. That's because when you hook the barbel, they tend to want to swim upstream, which is fine by me because then once you turn them they come swim downstream and it's possible for me to let them swim over the lip of that net and into the net without me even touching the net and once they're in the net it's quite deep the net and um, yeah they don't try and make an escape for, for freedom so then I can put my rod back down on the rest and I can use both hands to unhook the, uh, the barbel while it's still in the net and then um, you'll see that I've got a my mobile phone, it's an iPhone 8 Plus, it's on that corner there, so what I do is, if I want to take a photograph, fish stays in the net, so it's recovering in the water, I set the, set the phone on uh, um, self-portrait, I put a timer on it, I press the button, it's a 10 second timer, so then I pick the fish from the net, and I sort of squat down in the water, make the pose, take the photo, and then the fish goes straight back in the water. I hold him in the water for a while and then I let him swim off. And I always make sure that they've got the strength back. And then a little bit about uh, the gear itself. I'm fishing with a, a Daiwa Tournament Pro match rod. Um, I've got an extension in it, so at the moment it's at 15 feet. Um, it's quite a good, powerful rod. It's meant for, it's, wag, it's a waggler rod. And uh, maybe people are a bit confused why I would use that for barbel fishing. Well, I don't know if you've seen the video on these on YouTube, but you can bend the damn things in two and they will not break. And uh, there's a lot of power, especially when you've got the extension in the lower half. And uh, it's very flexible. Um, you don't bully the fish, but at the same time, you can put pressure on the fish and you can make it move upstream. And you can have confidence that the pressure you're putting on is, um, you know, it's not going to break the rod, it's not going to break the line, it's not going to break, pull the hook out of the mouth, it's not going to injure the barbel. So I quite like that. It's uh, set up with a centre pin. That was a, I seem to remember it was a birthday present of my father-in-law many, many years ago. It's 20, it's at least 20 years old. Um, it's a great reel, great reel, even 20 years later. Um, I'm fishing with a number two, uh, two gram, sorry, um, Dave Harrell Avon Trotter float. Um, I've got a two gram um, olivette 
and it's one of these uh, adjustable olivets you put two pieces of silicon rubber on the line and that holds the olivet in place so you can slide the olivet up and down the line to your heart's content the float is held on with two rubbers top and bottom of course so that slides up and down and then it's tied it's six pound line Dave Harrell uh, float great line uh, six pounds straight through to the hook so what that means is I can slide the olivet up and down and I can slide the float up and down and I can adjust it to whatever depth I want in seconds um, when I'm trotting down with the center pin I'm um, I've got the ratchet off and I'm just using my using the flow to take the float but I'm just um, putting my thumb on the on the drum as it's uh, as it's pulling off just to slow it down a little bit and hold it back if I want to or I can just let it run through and then when I've hooked a fish the first thing I do is I click the ratchet on and then I play the fish and then when the fish is unhooked put the hook back on the hook keeper put the rod back on the rod rest and uh, leave it on the ratchet until I'm ready to cast out. Um, I'm fishing with uh, luncheon meat. I tend to fish with cubes of luncheon meat, which is about 8 millimeters to 10 millimeters square. Sometimes it'll be more like 12 millimeters in one direction because I like to uh, hide the shank of the hook as much as I can. And uh, yeah, it seems to be a successful method. And it's a beautiful way to fish because it keeps you busy. You're not just sat there looking at the rod tip. This is a lovely stretch of the river, as you can see the upstream shot and the downstream shot and the Southern Valley Railway runs behind these trees here and uh, the steam trains running up and down all day so it's a beautiful place to fish but what I like more than anything it's being in the water so um, I'm, as, I'm as far out as I can get this is my what I call the Mark II station um, I've modified it a couple of times I'm actually going to design a completely new one and I'm going to probably try and make it out of uh, aluminium. This is, I'm getting a bit old now, I'm 61 and this is a bit heavy for me to carry down the bank. It's quite a steep bank as well, it's difficult to get down. But once you're in the water it's worth its weight in gold. And you can see that I've got a plastic box, I think I bought this from uh, Office Depot or something. It's got a couple of trays in, I can carry everything I need for a day's float fishing and a couple of bottles of water, some silicon spray, some forceps and yeah, that's all I need. I don't bring, uh, don't bring piles and piles of stuff and uh, everything he's, I've brought is on this tray. Back on the bank, behind me, which is a fair way away, over there, you'll see that's my uh, carry bag, which the platform fits in with all the legs and everything. And then leaning up against the carry bag, that's my... Uh, neoprene rod quiver for the rod so that's all I bring and then I'm in the river for the day and I don't move I'm here all day I, I stand, in, stand in this bit when I'm fishing and then when I've hooked a fish I just step backwards and I stand more here at the side of the net play the fish let him come upstream and then he comes down over the lip into the net great way to fish you should try it I think that's my uh, personal best barbel. Beautiful fish. Oh. I'm going to let him go now. Slow day, but that made up for everything. Another good fish. It's worth waiting for the whole day. Beautiful. And let it go there. Make sure he's got his strength back. There he goes.